Welcome to Lesson 3, Customizing the User Interface. We'll get started by creating and saving different UI layouts. We'll check out the new feature, Custom Parameter Palettes. We'll look at the general preferences for further customization, and we'll look at another new feature, Custom Keyboard Shortcuts. Next, we'll learn more tools and features and new ways to access them. We'll learn about color options for the UI and our figure preview. Finally, we'll check out display styles and create a sci-fi animation in just a few clicks. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, here we are with a fresh new scene and let's get right into customizing our interface. Come on down here to UI dots and I want you to click on a dot. Any one doesn't matter. And what we just did is created a memory dot or preset for our current UI layout. Let's have some fun and play with this layout and change it up. I often want to change my document window to start and let's change it to something more widescreen format. If you hover your mouse underneath the window, the cursor turns into a directional arrow, which means we can now click and drag and pull up like so and resize the window. Now I've got some jittery drag and lag on my mouse there. Because I'm recording my screen live, it should work really smooth on your end. And we can do the same on the sides of a palette. As soon as that little directional arrow comes up, we can start dragging in. And you can see every palette in the interface is flexible, just like that. Now, if you hover your mouse to the top of the palette, it turns into a hand icon. And now we can click and drag on that. And look, we now have a undocked floating palette. We can move it anywhere we want, even off to a second monitor if we like, and divide up our workspace between monitors. I'm just going to drag it back into place and above the top right corner here of every palette is a little black tiny triangle. Click it to access your docking options for that palette. As we can see it's checked as docked if we hit the floating tab there. Well it did the same thing as clicking and dragging and it just floats it. So I'll put it back, go back into options and you'll see drag docking enabled. Click that and it disables the drag docking function, which means you can no longer click and drag. It's helpful to lock your palettes like that because you'll find that you'll unintentionally move them around as you're just working about in your project. So keep aware of that. And let's move on to our parameters palette and click and drag on the top of it. There we go. And we've got a floating palette. It's sometimes helpful to just work with floating palettes so that they're very close to your character so you can go back and forth. Uh, with just a little bit of mouse drag in there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it to the other side of the interface. And as I'm moving it around, preparing to dock, you can see the interface highlights giving me an indication of what to expect. So I'll drop it there. And now I want to start cleaning up this new layout. And I'm going to get rid of palettes that uh, I don't want cluttering up my workspace. Let's start with recent renders. There's our Jedi render there from the last project go up into that black triangle and hit close. Now anytime you want to reopen anything, you just go up to window. We see all the check marked options, which means those are open and we can just recheck recent renders. It pops back up. And so I'll just close it out again and let's start clean in house. I'm going to close out lights and let's go all the way back to the library. We can close it out the same way, but the library is very special because we use it so often. And so it's got its own little toggle switch here. If you click the little stack of books, it goes away. We can bring it back with just a click and I'll put it back away for now. Now come back here and we see the UI dots taking up a lot of space. So let's stack them up here and I'm going to go back to my document window and bring it all the way down. Look what we got here in just a little bit of time. We've got a really nice clutter free clean workspace and our document window is nice and huge all on one monitor. So let's save another UI layout in our dots and now click back on your first layout. Look at that. With just a click, you snap your UI into a completely different workspace and we can go back and forth depending on how much clutter or access to tools that we want at that moment. So now let's say you got some dots that you've got stored here and you want to get rid of them. Just hold down the alt key, click and they disappear. So I'm going to go back to the first layout. And I want to point your attention to a brand new Poser 11 feature called Custom Parameter Palettes. We get access to that by clicking on this little arrow here at the top right of the Parameters Palette. And it's right there, New Custom Parameters Palette. 
Now mine opened up on my second monitor, so let me drag it into view. And what we got here is an open palette that we can completely customize. Let me show you how useful this is. Go to your face camera, first of all, Command or Control Plus, and let's get a good shot of Andy's head. Select the head, and his head parameters show up here. Remember these dials that we played with, that robot face and whatnot? Well, what we can do is click and drag and drop those right into our new custom palette. So I'll put human face, and how about robot face too? Now, what's so special about this is that if you click on the neck, or really anything other than the head, we notice that the head parameters, as expected, are no longer in the main parameters. However, they're still live in our custom palette here. In fact, even without selecting the head, we can still modify the head just like so. So the uh, intended use for this is if you find yourself in a project with uh, lots of characters and props, or even just a single character, doesn't matter. Anytime you are accessing the same parameters over and over and over, and you're having to select that body part, find it in your parameter list, instead of having to do all that work, you can have your most commonly used parameters right here ready to go without having to select anything at all. So very useful feature. Now what's even cooler is that we can throw in parameters here from different body parts. So let's go ahead and access the hand camera. Command or control right bracket for that first hand. I'll select the hand. Remember this grasp feature here? To make that fist, I'm going to go ahead and undo that and drag that parameter. And then I'm going to go to the other hand, command or control left bracket, jumps us to the other hand camera, select that hand, and bring that grasp. Now I'll go back to the main camera, and we don't ever have to grab the hands and select them anymore. We've got those grasp tools right here. Very handy feature, no pun intended. Okay, and so let's move on. What's really especially cool is not only different parameters from different body parts, but even different figures or objects. You can stack them all right here, whatever you want. Let's grab something from our main camera. Now, as we know, we're currently looking through our main active camera, but it's not highlighted in the parameters palette as a active selected object. So we can access that by coming up to the drop down, come down to cameras and main camera, and now here it is as an active editable object as far as parameters go. So now we can come on all the way down to Y orbit. I kind of like what that's doing. So I'm going to click and drag and slide that into our custom palette. And now look, they all work perfectly, ready to go. Now what's even cooler is we can click on the top name, custom parameters. Let's change it to something less technical. How about Andy's handy controls, just to make it fun. And it immediately updates. And we can even dock this baby right there, just like anything else. So a lot of power and flexibility here with the UI elements. We'll come back to these controls later. Let's just leave them put. I want to call your attention up top to edit. Come down to general preferences. And here we go. You need to know about a few things regarding your general preferences. Uh, right away we see the document tab is open and we see launch behavior. Uh, we see that it's set up to launch factory scene. That's this scene we've been working with, with Andy here and this uh, background he's in. You can set up any scene you want, however empty or full you want it, and set your preferred launch scene right here. Another great thing I should point out is this new feature in Poser 11 right here called Autosave. If you enable it, you can set up how often you want Poser to save another copy of your current work. And what can happen is over hours and days of work, you'll accumulate a complete record and timeline, and you can go back to any of those prior scenes should you want to go back to a prior stage. So a great new feature for Poser 11. Let's go into the next tab, Interface. And we got the same launch behavior options for the interface itself, aside from the scene document. And under that, I've got tablet mode checked under mouse input. If you're using a pen tablet of any type, make sure that's checked. Otherwise, you've probably noticed some erratic behavior when you click and drag. That will cure that for you. Come down low to UI scale, brand new feature again, Poser 11. You can scale the interface up as large or little as you like. Uh, I would do this sparingly and try it a little bit at a time because the results can be very dramatic, but a pretty cool feature for people with needs that have big monitors and want things to be easier to read. 
Now, probably one of my favorite new features is edit shortcuts. I'll click there. And we've got all of our pre-assigned shortcuts all listed out for us with the commands they're associated with. We can change them to whatever we want, and there's a lot of them that don't have any assignments yet. Remember when we imported a background picture? Let's create a shortcut for it. And we can hold down, how about Control I for uh, import? And I'll just do that on my keyboard, and it auto recognizes what I pressed. And I'm getting this warning in red, and this is saying that it's in use for something else. I don't want to override that, so I'll try something else. How about just I? Looks like that's available. I'll hit OK, and we see it right there. It worked. I'll hit OK again. Most of the rest of your preferences are going to be just fine with the defaults. Feel free to explore on your own, and we'll hit OK. Let's test out our shortcut. Hit the I key, and it works perfect. I can navigate to an image if I want just perfectly. So we'll come back to using that shortcut in another video. Let's explore one more thing in our Help menu. You should know about the Poser Reference Manual right here. If there's any questions or you want more detailed information on any of the features of Poser, well, that's where you're going to find it, Poser Reference Manual. I'm not going to open it up here, but you should definitely take a quick look at that when you got some time. So let's move back to our interface here. And I want to go back to the Tool Palette. Now, I exposed you to the first set of primary tools that are probably the most frequently used. Let's move on to a few others here. Now, one thing that I find myself needing to do is get in and out of the scene very quickly. We know that we've got camera controls on the left and our mini camera controls up here on the right. If I want to zoom in, I can zoom and pan and zoom and pan again. Uh, it's taking a lot of clicking and I'm a bit impatient. I'm going to restore my camera to jump back out. There's an easier way to do that. Of course, we know we can use the face camera to instantly change cameras, but I don't want to change cameras. What if I want to snap zoom without changing cameras? That's what view magnifier is for. Looks like a little magnifying glass. Click that. And then when you click and drag in the scene, it gives you an indication of how you're going to snap zoom. And bam, just like that, we snap zoom into our scene. We can get even closer. And when you want to jump out, just restore your camera. Command or Control, Shift H, bam. Real good way to get in and out of the scene. Now let's get back in there a little bit, maybe something like that. And by the way, the shortcut for that is the letter O for the view magnifier. Now let's hit R for rotate. And notice that if I want to select a body part, see what's happening here? I accidentally nudge the body part just a bit. All I'm trying to do is just select it. I'm using a pen tablet, and I got to tell you, it's almost impossible to select something without altering it just a hair. Even with using a regular mouse, that can be a problem. If you just want a risk-free solution for just clean selections, you want to know about the Select tool up top, very first tool. And now we can cleanly select. Even if you click and drag, you cannot alter the figure part at all. So know about that. Now, I want you to hit the T key. Remember, Translate. Let's pull out a little bit. And we already know that with Translate, we can pull to the right, pull to the left, pull up, and pull down. But we're in a three-dimensional space. What if I want to pull it toward me or away from me? Those are the other dimensions in the scene we need to be aware of. Well, this tool doesn't do it. If we come up and hover above our Translate tool, it says Translate slash Pull. Now, if we want to get in and out and be able to pull, Right next to it is Translate In Out. It works much like the other Translate tool, but operates in those two missing dimensions. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to pull out a little bit and click and drag, and you pull down to come towards the camera, and you click up, click and drag up to go away from the camera. I'm going to click and drag down. Now I'm going to rotate to the right so that it pulls the arm a little bit more towards the right, and I'll pull it pretty hard. Let's orbit around with our camera so we can see what's happening here. Look at this. We got some beautiful natural bending here. The spine is following the arm. Just like the other Translate pull tool, it naturally pulls the body with it. Now, these tools, many of the tools are based on what your camera is looking at and the perspective of it. If we try the same pulling on that same arm from this perspective, look, it pulls towards our camera. So. That's what's unique about some of these tools. And now with those two translate tools, you can pull in any direction in the scene that you like. Let's restore the figure, Commander Control F. And now I want you to hit the S key. 
just hit S on your keyboard and it changed to the scale tool. We can see it highlighted in our tool palette. Scale tool is pretty interesting because you can quickly scale up or down uh, objects or body parts just by clicking and dragging. Let's grab the head and click up and down, left and right, and we got the ability to scale it. Now, we're doing extreme stuff here, but let's try something like the arm. See how you can make body parts girthier just like that with no special tools or anything? Just nice and simple. So let's do something like that. And I'm going to come around and see what we did is it only based, again, it's based on our camera view. It's only scaling up and down and left and right based on this camera view. If we want to do the other direction, the z-axis of the head, we got to come around this side. And now we got up and down, left and right based on that camera perspective. So I'll come back around. And let's select the head and drag. There we go. Now with the head selected, Come over to the parameters palette and look what it's been doing. You can see the X scale, Y scale, and Z scale have all been affected individually by all that clicking and dragging, while the general scale is still 100%. And that would be scaling the whole thing uniform like so. So nice way to individually scale the head in its different axes using this tool. Let's do an experiment here and have some fun with this scale tool. I want to spend roughly about one minute and see how I can completely transform the character. I'm going to pull up, all done with the scale tool. Let's elongate and thin that neck out. Let's make the torso and chest and everything kind of stubby, something like that. There we go. And grab the hips, thin them out. I want to just do something radically different with Andy here so he doesn't even look like the same character anymore. Make those legs, just clicking and dragging, make those legs stubby. Elongate that upper arm. And let's hit O for our view magnifier tool. Let's rotate the camera and let's snap zoom into the hand without changing cameras. Hit the S key for the scale tool. And I'm just going to scale out the top two knuckles of the fingers one at a time. Just click and drag each one like so. And let's just see what kind of fun we can have with this one single tool. So just follow along and just keep clicking and dragging. Pretty easy stuff. And I really love how you can just completely create different things from scratch. We're doing this with a character, but it's really cool to use this tool when you want to scale up, a, I don't know, like a weapon in someone's hand to make it fit right, or maybe a ball or something like that, some sort of static prop. But great for characters. Okay, now that we got that going, let's restore our camera. Commander Control Shift H. I'm going to hit the W key for twist. I'm going to twist out that upper arm, twist the lower forearm. And remember when we did that symmetry command before? We went up to figure pose symmetry from the top menu bar. Well, we can do the same thing. There's a secret hidden menu. If you right click in your scene while hovering above the character, we get these special right-click contextual menu options. Most of these are just duplicates of the same thing you find up in your main menu bar. You can see we've got Restore that's normally under the Edit menu. And so a lot of figure-related uh, commands here just by right-clicking right in the scene and you'll see Symmetry. So we can access that here. I'm going to go left to right to basically make Symmetry happen on everything, arms and legs included, and bam, just like that, we've got Symmetry going on. I'm going to select Y for our clean select tool. I'm going to hit the hips and then I'm going to hit M for the manipulator tool and drop him down because his legs were shortened so it took his feet off the ground. And look at what we got coming together here. I'm going to hit the Y again and just get out of that manipulation tool. Now we've got the chest selected but watch what we can do. Let's go back to our Andy Handy Control custom palette and without even touching the face we can zero out that human face morph bump up the robot face too, and I can orbit the camera with this dial we got right here. And now look, we got a great look. What do we got here? We've got this uh, alien-esque X-Files kind of theme going on here. A completely different character. So it's amazing what you can do with uh, just simply clicking and dragging. I love it. Okay, so let's move on to some other stuff here. Uh, we got that new right-click menu. Uh, pretty awesome UI tools right there. 
Now, I want to turn off this ground plane again. Remember that? Go to the display menu up top or just Command or Control G, and that turns that off. OK, so now that we don't have the ground plane on, we kind of don't know what's going on in 3D space so much. We don't know, is he on the ground or is he not? Well, let's go up to display, and what we can do is turn on ground shadows. It's right there, and there we have it. And it's just a virtual ground shadow. This is not actually being cast by light. It's just a sort of a reference shadow, if you will. And it does not show up in your renders unless you want preview renders of actually what we see. But uh, most render engines will not display that. So if we now grab the uh, body group with this ring around him with the T for translate tool and just click up, we can see the effects of that ground shadow just like that. So I'm going to undo. And I'll, actually, I'll teach you one more trick. When you raise Andy up like that, if you hit Control D, you can drop anything to the ground. You can find that up in the menu bar items as well, but a really easy way to get things to drop exactly to the ground. Now, let's see here. What else do we want to do with Andy? I want to show you guys uh, display styles. Now, if we come to this palette in the left bottom corner, we haven't talked about it yet. One of my favorite areas of the program, uh, just start clicking on each of these circles one at a time. This is really awesome stuff. This is where we can have different ways of viewing the character. We can see its wireframes, uh, some sort of tune like ways of displaying the character. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this in later videos once we start talking about rendering, but it's not only for final output, um, it's also for just different ways of temporarily viewing the character while you're in the program. And so different ways of using these tools, I want you to select the very fourth one, it's hidden line. So the fourth one from the top left, or command or control the number four. Okay, now we've got this wireframe hidden line view here. And I want to start playing with color because the display styles and color have something in common where your color has a lot to do with the interface and how you're interacting with it, but it also has to do with the artistic output as well. So if you hover your mouse on these color dots at the bottom right uh, part of your document window, and look at the tooltips way back up here at the very top while hovering over these colors. It tells you what they're for. The second one, as you can guess by its color, is background color. And now we can use this cool RGB color picker to instantly change our color. So a lot of cool possibilities there. Now, let's see here. Every time I work with color, I like to have some fun. Let's just, actually for the background, let's just go stark black for now. There we go. Now, because our wireframe or foreground elements are also a dark color, it's kind of hard to see. So let's adjust that. That'll be the first color dot right here, foreground color. And there we go. Now we're coming alive. And you can see the possibilities here. It's pretty cool. So whenever I work in wireframe display mode, I always think of the movie Tron. Remember that? They did the reboot of that a few years ago. It was really awesome. So let's go with a Tron X-Files mashup theme here. And we can also change our shadow color. Right now it's kind of this uh, dusty color right here. And that'll be your third color dot down below. And so we'll click on that. Again, we got the color RGB slider display. Um, but we can color pick like we did in the last video from any part of the user interface or a background picture. But I'll just color pick from that same first dot of the wireframe foreground. That way they're matched up perfectly. And so there we go. It's all starting to come together. And let's go ahead and adjust our camera a bit. I want to have this guy looking down, like we're looking down on this guy, this little tiny alien Tron figure here. And get something like that going on there for a cool camera composition. And I'm going to come to our custom parameters palette over here, handy controls. And let's just zero out the Y orbit. OK. Now let's just do a quick, snappy little animation. In just real quick, maybe 30 seconds, it'll take us to set this up. We've got one frame. We're on frame one out of 30. Let's change that to 60. So it's a 60, 60 frame animation. And now 60 frames, well, at 30 frames per second, that's a two second animation. So we're on frame one still. I want you to go to your player controls, hit the second button from the left, end frame, and that'll snap you to the 60th frame, your very last frame. So now 
if we go back to our y orbit, let's go ahead and hit on the zero numerical value and hit 360. And now, if you hit enter to get out of there and hit enter one more time, and bam, we just did an animation in what, less than 30 seconds? And we got this cool Tron slash X-Files mashup theme kind of going on here. Uh, this nice visual display. We see this kind of thing in movies and uh, television a lot. I love working with this style. We'll get more into that in later videos, like I said. But for now, I hope you got a pretty good grasp of how flexible the poser interface is. You can really make it work for you and your creative style. And we also learned some new tools, a little bit about display styles and playing with color. I hope you had fun, and I will see you on the next video.